Now imagine if you had to do this for every tea shot. However, thanks to this Harvard doctor, we no longer need to worry about this. Did you know these were actually made from the same stuff fake teeth were made from? And I'm assuming the teeth are fake, yes? Until ironically enough, two dentists came along and changed the game and came up with what we're used to these days. My little wooden gold mine. This chap here is Dr. George Grant, and he was born in 1946 in New York to escape slaves. And he would find work as an assistant at a dentist's office that would eventually lead to him in 1968 to attending Harvard Dental School, where he would become the second ever African American to graduate Harvard Dental School in 1870, which would ultimately lead to him being the first ever African American faculty member in Harvard history, as he would accept a position in Harvard's mechanical dentistry program. And after his professorship, he would open his own dentistry practice and become widely respected and nationally known for his work with repairing cleft palates. And it's during this time, like most doctors, he would spend a lot of times hitting the links. In 1899, Dr. Grant grew frustrated with the tedious and messy process, basically having to build an ant mound every time he had to take a tea shot. After drawing inspiration from the Ellis Perfectum tea, which was made with a rubber spike and round rubber pegs to hold the ball in place, he felt it really wasn't all that practical and he wanted something he didn't mind carrying around in his pocket safely and comfortably. Because who doesn't want an iron spike in their pocket? Annoyed grunt, annoyed grunt. He would go on to create a wooden tee and he would apply for a patent in July 1st, 1899. And he would ultimately be approved of US patent number 638920 on December 12th, 1899. However, Dr. Graham is much more of an inventor than a marketer or entrepreneur. So he wouldn't have the realization to capitalize on this invention. And over the next decade, he would have his prototypes only made for his own personal use and hand them out to family, friends, and any playing partners who inquire about them. Then on August 21st, 1910, Dr. Grant would pass away of liver disease and the invention would die with him. Until 10 years later, in the 1920s, when another dentist who didn't particularly enjoy making those messy little ant mounds for his tee shot would start using gotta perch for his golf tees, which evidently was the same material that they used to make fake teeth and golf balls in the 19th century. Oh. Sounds great. Dr. William Lowe of New Jersey realized that these tees were much too brittle to use, so he would switch to using white birch for his tees. And this would lead to the invention of the Ready to. Another amazing invention I need to tell you guys about, Derby's Merino Golf Polos. They're made from natural merino wool, which helps you maintain a consistent body temperature. So if you're ever out there and you're too cold, they warm you up. If it's too warm out, they cool you down. They're super breathable and anti-odor as merino wool transports moisture away from your skin and releases it into the atmosphere. And customers say, all right, forget what they want me to read here, guys. Let me tell you, they sent me this shirt for free and it's truthfully, it has to be one of the most amazing shirts I've ever felt. Sorry if I'm messing with the mic there. It has the same feel as your favorite worn in gym or band shirt, except it actually looks nice. So if you want a nice clean looking shirt that doesn't have that spandexy feel that most golf shirts have these days, please go ahead and check out the link in my description about these. Just no, it is an affiliate link, so if you do get something, I get a small kickback, but you get an awesome shirt and you get to support the channel, so it's win-win. So back to Dr. Lowe, who unlike Dr. Grant, saw a huge untapped marketplace for this invention, and in 1922, Dr. Lowe would pay PGA players Walter Hagen and Joe Kirkwood to use his ready tees and purposely leave them behind at the tee box whenever they played. And this would go on to be a genius marketing campaign, as by this time there was a number of other designs, but none of them would have nearly as much success as the ready tee, which would go on to be a common place some golf courses and helped generate $100,000, which is almost 2 million today in its first year for low. The Ready Tee would revolutionize the game of golf However, it wouldn't be until six years later when Lowe would finally get a patent for his creation. However, people started to notice a lot of similarities between Lowe's invention and Dr. Grant's, filed nearly a quarter century earlier, and this would lead to a number of patent infringement lawsuits and legal issues for Dr. Lowe's, as he would go on to spend many years and a fortune fighting patent infringement lawsuits up until his death in 1954 at the age of 91. And in 1991, the United States Golf Association would officially recognize Dr. Grant as the original original adventure of the wooden tee. If you would like to learn more about another turn of the century Harvard educated doctor with tea ties <laughs> with ties to the game of golf, please feel free to check out this video here. See ya. Three, two, one. Mechanical dental tree program. Charlie. All right, now let's go. Cat. Kitty cat. Two dentists came along and changed cat. I'm trying to do something here. Cat, what are you doing? Bah. Did you know these were actually cat? Settle down, buddy.